So let's start with a summary of uh, what we'll be covering in this project. We'll start with a brief introduction to the inverse design method. Then we'll be looking at the mainline design of the centrifugal pump stage. Then we'll see how the impeller can be designed using the 3D inverse design approach. We'll also briefly look at the design of the volute and then uh, we'll see how the performance of this baseline impeller can be enhanced through the use of automatic, automatic optimization with inverse design. And uh, finally, we'll wrap up with some concluding remarks. So let's start with an introduction to the idea behind the inverse design approach which we use throughout this presentation. As you can see in this workflow, these are the inputs that are used by the inverse design method to give us the final blade design. So apart from some basic parameters, these blade, blade loading inputs are really flow related. So once you have a good understanding of your specific flow issue, whether it's profile or secondary flow or cavitation that you're dealing with, it's possible to come up with guidelines on the optimum blade loading to tackle each of these issues. And actually this know-how has generality, which makes it suitable for all your, uh, all your pump applications. And so what's interesting then is that you only need to rely on your knowledge of flow physics. And then this method will work for you regardless of your pump size or uh, which specific speed regime it falls under. So this makes the entire pro process very intuitive and uh, removes any empiricism that's commonly seen in conventional design methods. Now let's look at the design of pumps in a bit more detail. So across the specific speed range, pumps are subject to various flow phenomena and loss mechanisms which are dominant in that particular range. So for example, as you can see in this uh, specific speed chart, uh, leakage and secondary flow effects are more dominant in the lower ranges, whereas profile losses and corner separation in diffusers uh, will take priority in the higher ranges. Also, phenomena such as cavitation can affect pumps over the entire specific speed range, and uh, this is something that must be dealt with on a case basis. So the question then is whether it's possible to come up with a set of optimal design guidelines based on these uh, fluid dynamic considerations of reducing the uh, dominant flow losses for your pump. And uh, this is actually what we aim to explore through this project.